Good morning. I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses uh, chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 2 through 7. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our, all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's suffering, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is unshaken. For we know that as you share in our sufferings, you will also share in our comfort. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with us this morning in a very close way. Giving to raise loved ones, his family and his loved ones, a gratefulness for the memories, a joy in knowing that he is with you, a comfort that you are with them, a hope for today, a hope for that one day in the future when you will re reunite them with Ray. May we honor him, may we honor Ray, and may we honor you, which is only right and something that Ray would have wanted. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Faith is a great word, it talks about uh, the evidence of things not seen, the hope for things to come, and we know that Ray placed his faith in Jesus Christ alone for his eternal destiny. And so we're going to sing about God's great faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Great. 
Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Ray Pilcher, age 82, passed away on January 11th, 2024, in Summerfield, Florida, surrounded by family. Ray was born in Pine Mountain Valley, Georgia, on July 24th, 1941. He enjoyed golfing, deep sea fishing with family, watching football, and cruising with the love of his life. He served his country in the United States Army for three years and served his community as a firefighter for Fort Lauderdale for 28 years. He is survived by Sandy Pilcher, wife, Todd Pilcher's son, Lynn Pilcher, daughter, Randy Pitt, other son, and grandchildren, David, Sarah, and Tyler, Ann Dabbs, sister, Tom Pilcher, brother, and three great-grandchildren. He was predeceased by Louis Raymond Pilcher, Sr., father, Alma Pilcher, mother, Margaret Cox, sister, Mary Priest, sister.
Good morning. <clears throat> um, I'm Randy Pitt. I am Ray's stepson, and um, I'm honored to be able to speak for the for the kids and for the grandkids in memory of of Ray and what he meant to us. Um, one of the common words that is is used so much about Ray is giving. Just an incredible, incredible man. Ray brought Ray was brought into my life uh, 28 years ago. It made an impact on me right away. I was in an accident in San Angelo, Texas that was pretty severe and he did not hesitate to get things together for, for mom and himself to come stay with me. Um, the area that shows the character of Ray is giving. And as I said, um, one of the things that happened during that time was my grandparents also wanted to come. Well, they lived in, in North Carolina and not even thinking, this was, was, was Ray, not even putting anything to it to say, 
let's fly to North Carolina, and then we'll, we'll, we'll drive your parents to, to, to West Texas. And that was him. That was just Ray, and that just really um, impacted me in such a way that it just showed um, everything he cared for, of course, my mom, but just in the way that he was in regards to his, his character as well. Um, a saying from, from, from John, <clears throat> a son-in-law, that Ray gave me a path that no one saw in me, the path to God. Ray showed me a light and guided me till I was ready to accept the Lord and continue in my own light. Ray has and will always be in my heart, and I know he will still be with me in my journey. So that was just beautiful um, from John. And then Lynn and Todd also have, have, have said some words that from, from Lynn, actually from, from both. When, when I think about my father, many words come to mind. Old school, respect, punctual, hardworking, evolving, loving, giving, caring. He believed that God came first and then family. He was dedicated to all of us though. <clears throat> From Todd, my father was often seen as, as larger than life. He lived every day to the fullest and made the best of every moment. He wore many hats in his days um, and, he, and he wore them all extremely well. He was a serviceman in the army, a butcher, a firefighter, a fisherman, a businessman, a husband, a father, a church deacon, a landlord, and so much more. He always believed that if you want something, you need to work hard and you can be able to, to, make, to, to have those achievements. We've heard many stories about the struggles that dad had just trying to get on the fire department. In his youth, he was very skinny, young man, and he had to scarf down bananas breakfast, lunch, and dinner <clears throat> to be able to gain enough weight to be able to make the minimum weight required to join the fire department. He loved the fire department. He always said he never worked a day in his life. He was just so dedicated to serving his community. <clears throat> and, and then became a poster child for the American Heart Association. Todd said, you know, I remember... <laughs> walking through station in Nuremberg, Nuremberg, Germany. And, and there was dad. And what he meant is that on the wall in, in the airport, he said to his buddies, Hey, come here, look at this guys. That's, that's my dad. And it was a poster of him and below. And, um, and, and the, and the, and the guys looked at, at the, at the, at the poster in the picture and they said, yeah, that is your dad. <clears throat> Absolutely amazing in, in that regard. Um, and then from, from, from Lynn. To me, he always seemed like a superhero. I wrote a high school paper about my superhero. I can remember trying to qualify for state, a state gymnastics competition. Dad, unfortunately, was in the hospital after a frost, frostbite fire in the Everglades in an oxygen tent. And he couldn't make it. Um, I knew I was not going. <laughs> I knew I was not going to qualify because I was about to start my last routine, and I needed a score that I had never even come close to. I remember walking up to the uneven bars, looking into the crowd, and seeing my dad. I qualified, and I knew right then and there I was lucky. I had my own superhero. He risked his health to inspire me. I think he did that for all of us. He inspired the people around him to do their best, work hard, fight for what you want, and never forget to give up. And always, and always give back, excuse me. <clears throat> Many people have fishing stories, and um, two, two to tell that dad's somewhere uh, always in the picture. The ocean was a sanctuary. He was out there not to play games, but or soak up the sun. He was there with game on. <laughs> We've been fishing all of our lives. 
we still can't do it right. <laughs> and if anyone's been in the boat with Ray, you understand that. <clears throat> and, if, and if you were in dad's boat, <laughs> you, you'll, you'll never do it right. <laughs> I have no idea how many head slaps <laughs> I've seen dad deliver to those that, that don't keep the rod tip up, <laughs> reel against the drag. Um, he was just an amazing, amazing person. From Lynn, I remember trying to, to, to reel in one last big dolphin. Dad was captain. We were in rough, we were in rough seas. The boat was bouncing. I'm reeling and reeling and reeling. And I'm just like, my gosh. And then John is holding on to me, keep me in the boat. <laughs> so, it, so I didn't pitch or, or, or get, get pulled out of the boat. <laughs> but the dolphin kept on zinging the line. 20, 30 minutes go by. All of a sudden, and again, dad was captain. <laughs> and all of a sudden, everybody starts laughing. And what he had done was that he was actually trolling against the line. <laughs> so I had to fight even harder. And, and, he, and he said, I wanted you to make it a fight to remember. <laughs> <clears throat> a, uh, another story from, from Todd in regards to <clears throat> being on the boat. Dad always said that if you, if you go overboard, your ticket back on the boat, you better have that fishing rod. <laughs> I've never, forgot being yanked, I've never forgot being yanked off the boat. I told dad I had a fish <clears throat> and, it, and it pulled me off. <laughs> he thought I was playing. And the only way I get back on the boat, I had the rod. <laughs> but I was still in trouble for playing. <laughs> I kept telling him I had a fish on, I had a fish on. He just thought I hit bottom. Then I brought up two groupers. Well, but dad was never wrong. <laughs> Um, some quotes that, that, that really define, define Ray and, and actually have really stuck with Todd and, and they still will from, from this point forward and forever. Your character is not defined <clears throat> what you do when everybody is watching. Your character is defined when nobody is watching. As Todd says, this is something that will stay with, with him forever. The easy way is to not always be the best. I'm sorry, the easy way is not always the best way. <clears throat> and if you're 15 minutes early, you will never be late. <laughs> and I go by that one every day as well. Um, and there was, there was, there was one that, that I always um, loved as well too. And it was, uh, um, are you gonna catch that fish or is he catching you? <laughs> he was an amazing person. Um, the last piece of, is a, um, a, a poem that, uh, that Lynn found just absolutely beautiful. And it's by Liz, Elizabeth Amans. And it's the really, really captures the spirit of right. You can shed tears because he is gone, or you can smile because he lived. You can close your eyes and pray he will come back, or you can open your eyes and see what he left for you. Your heart can be empty because you can't see him or you can be full of love you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow or live in yesterday or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember only that he is gone or you can cherish his memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind and feel empty. Or you can do what he would, smile, open your heart, love, and go on. Thank you. Ray loved music, and uh, one of his favorite songs is It Is Well With My Soul. Like a river 
attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul my sin oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not Jesus Christ, our Lord. He wanted to be a part of a church that preached the gospel and called people to give their lives to Christ. I could tell when he arrived here at Tri-County that he had been a great asset and a trusted servant in any church where he was a member. And he wanted to be in, again, a church that preached the gospel. And so I'm going to read a passage from, I think this is his parents' Bible. Okay. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. Think about Ray saying this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, there was a day, I don't know when it was, but there was a day that uh, Ray realized he need to, needed to make the Lord his shepherd when he claimed the Lord as his shepherd, what we call, he got saved. There was a day he realized that he couldn't do this on his own. And he repented of his sin, asked for the Lord's forgiveness, surrendered his life to Jesus Christ, and made the Lord his shepherd and his new guide. And that good shepherd led Ray through life, in green pastures, beside still waters, and through burning buildings and repairing homes and building a life for his wife, family, and loved ones. And then as the final days approached, his good shepherd was still with him, 
And even though Ray walked through that valley of the shadow of death, the shepherd's rod and staff comforted him. And now, blessed Ray is dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. I must ask you, have you made the Lord your shepherd? It's not just a poetic thing. It's a real thing. The Bible says all we like sheep have gone astray. All. No exception. Me too. Sheep don't make good shepherds. You need to make the Lord your shepherd. That's what we call being converted, getting saved, giving your life to Christ. Ray did that. And he would, that was important to him, that we would be in a church that spoke like that. So have you made the Lord your shepherd? Have you admitted that we like sheep have gone astray, that Jesus died on the cross for your sin and rose again, and that all who admit their sin turn from their own way to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and trust him for forgiveness and salvation? He will take them and cleanse them and make them his child, his little lamb forever. Receive Christ today as Savior. Know your sins are forgiven. Stop going your own way. Go God's way, like Ray. And be sure that heaven is going to be your home where you can not only be with the Lord forever, but with Ray and all the others who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. So I close as I started. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction. Right before Ray passed into glory, um, there were many of us who gathered around his bed and were talking with him. And uh, the Holy Spirit just told me, let's, let's sing a song for Ray. Ray loved music. And uh, I said, Ray, what would you like us to sing? He says, anything you start. <laughs> so we all sang Amazing Grace. And I'm going to sing it for you now, Amazing Grace.
And now we will have the rendering of final honors. Good morning. Thank you very much for allowing the City of Fort Lauderdale Fire Department to take part in this most important moment to share respect for our fallen brother. This is a tradition we do for all of our fallen brothers and sisters who passed on, moved on to better places. So. The fire service is rich in traditions. Throughout most history, the life of a firefighter has been closely associated with the ringing of the bell. As Lieutenant Raymond Pilcher began his tour of duty, it was the bell that started it off. Throughout the day and night, each alarm was sounded with a bell. This called Lieutenant Pilcher to the duty of rescuing a person or fighting a fire. With each alarm, Lieutenant Pilcher placed his life in jeopardy for the good of a fellow firefighter or a citizen. When the fire was out and the rescue was accomplished and the alarm had come to an end, the bell rang 555 five, five to signal the end. Now, Lieutenant Pilcher, our friend and brother, has completed his task and his duties are now done. The bell now rings 555. Five, five, in memory of Lieutenant Raymond Pilcher, in tribute to his life, his contributions to the fire service, the Fort Lauderdale Fire Department, and the citizens of the city of Fort Lauderdale. Let's pray. 
Thank you, Father, for being with us in this service today, offering hope to the family and loved ones, offering salvation to those who've never officially, intentionally placed their faith in you. And thank you for the amazing, wonderful life of Ray Pilcher. His family and loved ones cherish the memories, his love, his presence, their times together. Comfort them in the days ahead. They are thankful that Ray is with you, healthy, whole, and happy. And they look forward to a blessed reunion one day. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I invite you to come by and express your love to the family and loved ones. And then after a moment, uh, we'll have a luncheon prepared for uh, the family and close loved ones. Amen. You're dismissed. Take a stand.